Hey everybody, this is Jason Akers with Green Acres Pest Control and I just realized I'm not wearing a hat. So, there you go. <laughs> it's late. I was up late tonight with the, with the kids. I stayed up late. My daughter, her birthday is in a couple days and we kind of did an early celebration tonight for her. And so, uh, I'm here late. Got along later tonight than, than what I usually do. But hope everybody's doing okay. Hope everybody can hear me. Let me know if you can't. If I need to adjust any settings on my microphone, I have no problem doing that, fixing that for you guys so you guys can hear. So, uh, wondering how everybody is doing. Hope everybody's doing okay. I'm doing good. I did one of the worst bed bug jobs I think I've ever done today. Early this, well, not early this morning, but around midday ish. I did a pretty crazy bed bug job. So, uh, I don't know why I'm sharing that right now. Let's go there. <laughs> uh, actually, let's just do... Hmm, this one. There we go. Hope everybody's doing alright tonight. So, uh, we did a video this week. Usually my videos release on Tuesdays. And, uh... So I did have one go live this week on, um, let's see, actually, I think it's, so I've been, I've, I, let me show you this new thing I've been doing. Actually, I don't know if anybody is subscribed. You should be, if you're here, you should be, because if you subscribe to the channel, then you will, uh, and especially if you use your cell phone. So there's a new feature that YouTube is doing now. Let's go ahead and share this screen. that one and we'll go to YouTube so this is my channel and you can get there by just doing going to YouTube let me type it in chat here youtube.com slash green acres PC and that's my YouTube channel so for anybody in the chat you know of course you're here you're here but um, if you go here so they've got a new feature now um, called shorts so you can still view these if you're on a computer, but um, if you go down, hey there, how are you? If you go down here, these new videos I've got that upload once a day, um, oh, I have to sneeze. I feel like, excuse me, if I think to mute my mic, I do. But anyway, if you go down, I've got these new videos I've been uploading. They're less than a minute long, but they're basically snippets of videos I've already done. And I do them, I load them to TikTok. So I've, I've got several. So with the way that YouTube works, you can actually set videos to release like once a day. All of these videos have already been released on TikTok. In fact, I've got several that are set to release over the next few days that are already on TikTok. So if you have the TikTok app on your phone and you want to go see these videos before they release on YouTube, by all means, the link is in the description. Go check me out on TikTok. But I've got these new videos I've been doing and they're basically little snippets of, of uh, longer videos that I've done. So if you don't want to watch the long video of like maybe 15 minutes, these are basically the like, you know, 60 second little bits and pieces here and there of those videos. And so I've uploaded those. But I did do a video on ticks this week and uh, I wanted to go over ticks because it's time for ticks. It's tick season. And I wanted to give a few pointers that are, that are in that video. I wanted to talk about how you can eliminate ticks on your own without having to hire a professional. And the way you would do that is this time of year. Now, I'm in Virginia. It may be different depending on where you live, where you're from. If you're further north, it will occur later in the year. If you're further south, you may already be in the heat of tick season. But um, tick season typically happens uh, in Virginia between March and May. And so what you want to do is you want to go out and you want to treat your yard for ticks. And if you go to my Amazon page, I actually have, which I'll, I'll link that below in the description, well, in the chat, it's also in the description. But if you go here, I actually have tick control right here and different uh, ingredients that I, well, ingredients, different, different um, products that I recommend to deal with ticks on your own if you were going to do something on your own. And so if you go here, I want to I want to go over this a little bit because I did talk about this on my video, but these are the granules I use. Well, I don't use these specific ones, but I do use bifenthrin granules, same ingredient. 
Um, but these are usually always available. You can usually always find these. Uh, you could find them at Walmart as well, the bifenthrin granules. But um, I just put a few things here that I think would work for most people. Uh, I don't know why I have a flow zone. I don't think that's even supposed to be there. Uh, that's a backpack sprayer if you wanted to use a backpack, but that's not really typically for yard treatments. I don't even know why that's there. But here's what I usually recommend. Now, this is something you can use on your yard to kill ticks. What I recommend is, is spreading bifenthrin granules over the yard first with, a, with like a lawn spreader like there. And then uh, going back behind yourself with this here, and it'll water the yard, plus it's got an active ingredient in it that will also kill ticks. And the reason you want to do a tick service now is because ticks are breeding and reproducing now. So they're actually, um, from the animals and things that have come and brought them into the yard over the, you know, over the years, they're actually reproducing. The eggs are hatching, they're laying eggs and stuff like that right now. So if you go out and you treat them, you get the hatchers, the, the eggs that are hatching, plus you're getting the adults getting ready to lay eggs. And sometimes two, three years will go by and you won't have any ticks at all. So I just wanted to mention that real quick. I typically do go over uh, the videos. Like like I said, this was the latest one that was released. This was just Tuesday this week. And so I wanted to kind of touch on what I talked about there. If there's any questions at all tonight, uh, like bed bugs or anything like that you want to talk to me about, uh, you know, go ahead. You can call in if you want. I've got a phone number there. And if you, uh, or you could just ask in the chat and I'll repeat the question and then I'll answer the question because typically that's what I do. For people who watch this um, later on in the day or later on, you know, tomorrow or maybe three or four days from now or even weeks from now, I like to repeat the question that's asked so that everyone that watches the VOD can actually understand what's asked and what question's answered. So I hope everybody's been doing all right. I had, um, about speaking of TikTok, let me show you my TikTok. So the way I get to it, because I can never remember, I think it is TikTok.com at Green Acres PC. Like that. There we go. So there's my TikTok channel. So these are some videos that I made today. These are brand new ones I just put up today. These are one of the ones like, so these I won't, I don't think I'm going to actually put these on my YouTube channel. Uh, these two videos here, this is basically how to mix. So if you click this, let's see if I can, with Green Acres Pest Control. And this is a very unique video. We're not going to talk about getting rid of things today. We're actually going to talk about the proper way to mix your pesticides. I'm going to go over two specific. So these are the these are the kind of things I've been releasing on TikTok. So this is like a minute long, but I want to show you. I'm not going to play it because the music is going to get copyrighted by YouTube, and I can't play it, so you can't listen to it. But I've got two really good bed bug videos here. I just did this job today, so I recommend if you want to go see some horrible, awful, awful awful bed bug pictures are really good bed bug pictures depending on how you view bed bugs um these are probably some of the best videos i've ever gotten of actual really horrible bed bug infestation it's one of the worst ones oh uh, there's and this is this is the same house here of the same this is this is actually the bed is lifted up. I lifted the box spring up off of the bed frame and kind of leaned it up against the wall and took this video. But this was before I picked the bed up here. In the you see them. These are all bed bugs. All these are bed bugs. All these shaded spots here. All this. All that's bed bugs. So I'd recommend if you want to go check it out. I'll link that too for anyone in chat that wants to see that. Um, and go follow me on TikTok. And I just do this. Just I mean, really, honestly, the reason I'm here in YouTube, it's a hobby for me. I enjoy speaking to all you guys. I like trying to help the, the public where I can. Um, and I think it's a pretty cool thing to do. I've, I've always liked art and telling a story with pictures and telling a story with video. And, and so, uh, like I said, if you're interested in going and checking out some of my stuff on TikTok... Uh, by all means, I've got lots of different stuff. I've got, you know, this is one that I did of bed bugs, bed bugs in a book. Um, it's a lot of bed bug stuff on TikTok. Uh, this is actually a job that I did. See, I'm 
this was earlier last year. Um, yeah, so if you're interested in seeing th all things like TikTok, there's, I mean, bed bugs or whatever, there's some stuff there for you. But um, they're just fun little things I do. I sit on the couch at night and watch TV with the wife, and I'll edit TikToks on my iPad, so... <laughs> So, are there any questions? I had a question. Let me see. I actually did have a question on my YouTube. Um, let's see here. It was on my channel, which I recommend if you go to the community tab of my channel, there are places to ask questions and stuff like that. Um, someone asked if does ozone kill bed bugs? So I'm not sure what ozone is. Um, unless it's an actual name of a pesticide, I think it's okay. According to recent control laboratory studies, clean zone systems ozone was found to be effective in eradicating bed bug infestations. In controlled laboratory studies at clean zone systems, so let's see what is this. This is a PCT mag. I get this magazine, by the way. Um, so let's see what this is about. This was in 2008. This is a very old article. Yeah. Is a powerful oxidizer, environmentally friendly alternative to pesticides, and is safe to use in homes with children and pets. Ozone, which crossfire is also safe to use in children with uh, homes of children and pets. Uh, ozone converts back to oxygen after about 30 minutes, leaves behind no harm. Oh, yeah, I wouldn't use this. This is crap. Yeah, it might kill them. All right, so the question was given. So let me show you. If you go to my YouTube channel, which we should be able to get back to this way. Yeah. And so you're on my YouTube channel, Green Acres Pest Control. There's, there's my YouTube channel. And you go over here to the community tab right here. I posted this first thing this morning. So it's live stream Thursday. Don't forget to get your questions submitted. So I like to kind of know what people are going to ask ahead of time. So I can kind of start the show off with like, this is what we're going to talk about today. Um, let's see. Wonderlust says, because we're all home during this time, I think bed bugs have traveled to couches, chairs. Do you recommend large room heater for this? No, I don't recommend heating for bed bugs at all. Um... I'm against heating for bed bugs. Anyone that has watched my channel more than, you know, four or five weeks, I am against heat treatments. Um, especially a DIY heat treatment, you're likely to burn your house down. It's not recommended. So that's me. That's a goofy picture I took last year, and I put it on a transparent background. But um, basically, I, I like to ask people what kind of questions they would like me to answer. And so I had this one question here from Annie that says, does, does ozone kill bed bugs? And I mean, you can't really see it because I got a bunch of crap over top of everything. But um, ozone does kill bed bugs. I mean, it's been proven to kill bed bugs from what they say here. This, this specific product here um, actually does kill bed bugs. But the problem is, this is a very old article. This is from 2008. It's a very old way of killing bed bugs. And it's not really very effective anymore. Not with new products that we've had since 2008. Like, uh, so if you go to Crossfire, so there's the Crossfire pesticide that I recommend. Now you could find that. That took me two seconds to find and bring that up. Uh, Pest Free Direct, Bed Bug Supply, Have It. Um, if you go to, it's actually on my channel. So if you go to the Bed Bug Supply, section i've got all kinds of stuff for bed bugs that i recommend to kill bed bugs um there's the crossfire right there on amazon and so you could get next day delivery on amazon if you've got amazon prime um actually this says uh fastest delivery saturday march 27th right now we are in we're going into friday honestly because it's like 11 o'clock on a thursday night and you can get it by saturday morning that's like a day and a half you can get it delivered to your house and it's in stock, and it's thirty six ninety eight, which is actually one of the cheaper prices for those that watch me regularly and know I talk about Crossfire all the time. Um, that's actually a pretty cheap price on Amazon. 
So that's what I recommend. I think that's going to be better at getting rid of the bed bugs. Um, I did find a, for my Canadian viewers, which I do have a lot of people from Canada who watch my show, um, I have found that now Canada does have uh, Apprehend, which is, let's see, bed bug is what we want. And there's the website. So the problem with Apprehend in, uh, see, it says now available in Canada. This is actually really, really good for bed bugs. Now, I don't use, I don't use Apprehend uh, myself. Um, I think that if Crossfire were to stop working, that would probably, like this here, I think if Crossfire stopped working, I would probably move to using Apprehend. Honestly, I think I probably would. It's a pretty good chemical. A lot of other exterminators have used it and said they're getting about a 90-day residual off of it, and it absolutely does, and it limits your callback. You don't have to go back on near as many jobs, so this is really, really effective. The problem with Apprehend is that in the States, now I don't know how it is in Canada, but I know that in the States, uh, you're not allowed to even purchase this unless you have a license. So you have to buy this uh, from certain suppliers, and you're not you're not actually allowed to buy it unless you have a license. It's not a restricted use, I don't believe, but they don't they don't sell it to people unless they know what they're doing. And so you have to use this specialized equipment. You can't just put it in you know a Clorox spray bottle or something like that and use it. It has to be on these low volume sprayer kit type things to be able to use it. And typically it's an entire bottle. It already comes mixed the way you need it. You just take this, add it to this machine, and it allows you to treat for uh, bed bugs. Um, I've had people contact me, not just professionals, but I've had um, you know clients of exterminators that have said that that the exterminator came in and used Apprehend and it got rid of their problems. So. If you do live in Canada and you are having problems with bed bugs, I know you cannot get Crossfire in Canada, but you can get Apprehend in Canada now. You may have to hire a professional to do it, but it's going to be something that will be done and it will be done right. So that's the important thing, as long as you can get rid of your bed bugs. And so I dil diligently try to figure out uh, how Canadians can get rid of bed bug problems because I have a lot of people on my uh, subscription list. A lot of people are subbed to me from Canada, and I'm try I've been racking my brain for two years trying to figure out something that would help you. And so I hope, hopefully, this will help. I know it's probably a pretty expensive thing to have to pay to have done, but it is better than getting eaten alive with bed bugs. Personally, in my opinion, uh, after you see some of the places I've seen today, um, yeah, it's it's it it could be pretty pretty severe. So hopefully this will help. I know it's not, you know, a do-it-yourself type solution, which is what I'm known for, but it is a solution nonetheless. So, all right. So Wonderlust asks about a zap bag oven. So a zap bug oven. So the way, if you're going to do a heat treatment yourself. Now I have, as far as actually doing a heat treatment for bed bugs. So the things that I recommend are stuff like this that you could do yourself. Now, these are just little rooms that you kind of put together with some tent poles and they're these nylon bags that, that fit over top of them. And then they heat up inside these rooms. So this would be for things that you wouldn't be able to treat with, say, Crossfire, like maybe books or, you know, things that aren't going to be damaged with heat, but you can't really spray it with a pesticide. And so you can keep them in these little rooms and it'll heat up your personal belongings and kill any bed bugs that are in those personal belongings. The only, the, and, and, and that's actually another thing that I started putting on TikTok. I started putting on my, I started breaking up my very first video I ever did uh, for, for YouTube about um, why heat treatments don't work on bed bugs. And one of the main reasons that heat treatments for your home don't actually work for bed bugs is because the bed bugs try to run away from the heat. When you turn a machine on that produces heat in the room, the heat has to gradually increase over time. Now, what happens is as it gets hotter and hotter and hotter, the bed bugs will actually retreat into the walls. They will try to get away from the heat, 
and it's very difficult to get all of the bed bugs with the heat machine. Now, I'm not saying you won't get rid of a majority of the problem. More than likely, you will as far as whatever is living in the mattresses or box springs or wherever. As long as you target the heat to those areas, yes, you'll kill the bed bugs in those areas. But the problem is, is that the bed bugs that are actually living in the room or the eggs that are even laid in the wall, because bed bugs will go in the wall and lay eggs, just like cockroaches, they'll go in the walls and they'll lay eggs in the wall. Um, those eggs will not be killed by a heat treatment. It's just not possible. It's not physically possible to get the heat to permeate through the wall and get through the insulation and kill the bed bugs. So the problem is, is that people who do heat treatments, usually within, say, I mean, like, usually about a month or two, they end up having bites again from the bed bugs. And then the exterminator comes behind and they say something like, well, um, it's because you didn't do this correctly, or it's because you've reinfested your home, or, you know, whatever BS reason they want to give you as to why you still have bed bugs. And you really never got rid of them in the first place. The, the reason is, is because the service was a subpar service and it's not really designed so much to eliminate the, com and, and completely eliminate the problem you're having. It's, it's more designed to, um, a temporary bandaid. And so, uh, in fact, when I first made that video, which I'll show it to you right now, it's actually my number one. So if you go to videos and you, um, let's see, this is my channel. Let's, let's sort by most popular. So it's my most popular video. Um, let's actually switch scenes real quick. So it's right here, this video right here, which a lot of you have watched who are here. Um, why heat treatments don't work on bed bugs. That was done four years ago is what it says here. Now, the problem with that video is when I made that video, most exterminators were doing heat treatments only. Um, in fact, the Orkin, Terminex, um, I believe even locally Dotson, were just doing heat treatments with no chemical residual. Um, since I made that video, uh, a lot of people have started doing a chemical residual along with a heat treatment. So the heat treatment knocks out about 80 to 90% of the total bed bug infestation. And then the idea is that the liquid that they put behind is a residual that will last when the heat is turned off. See, this is one of my biggest arguments with a heat treatment is that once you turn the heat off, there's nothing there to kill the bed bugs that are coming out of the wall. And so uh, what a lot of pesticide companies, pest control companies are doing now is they're actually doing a uh, liquid residue behind the heat treatment so they go in they heat treat your apartment they heat treat your house they heat treat you know whatever and then uh after the heat has been turned off and the temperature comes back down then they go through with a you know a sprayer and they treat around your baseboards and you know if you still have mattresses or box springs if you haven't thrown them away or your furniture or whatever they treat those things with the pesticide and my argument is if they have to treat this stuff anyway and you still have to wait for the bed bugs to emerge from the walls just like they normally would even if you just sprayed without a heat treatment um then why not just spray and not do the heat treatment at all because a heat treatment is an extremely expensive procedure to have done um some of the prices here are you know four or five hundred dollars a room uh you have to do the whole house and so if it's a two three bedroom house that's like anywhere from you know twelve thirteen fourteen hundred dollars uh, up to I've seen quotes as high as twelve grand, um, but typically the the standard high price is about uh, forty nine hundred dollars, and that's the like the highest scale. I mean twelve thousand dollars was only one quote that I actually saw um, in Woodbridge, Virginia, which is quite a well like three hours north from me. But um, the point is, is that the 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 quotes are all over the place, but typically. For a heat treatment, it's anywhere from $1,500 to uh, $4,900 for a heat treatment. And um, like I said, if you're just going to do a chemical residual afterwards to kill whatever stragglers are left behind, well, you can do that in the beginning and any live bed bugs that get hit. Like, for example, Crossfire, if you spray a bed bug with Crossfire in five minutes, it's dead. I mean, it kills it dead, dead. And so if you're treating the mattresses and the box springs and the baseboards and the you know, all the places you're supposed to treat with Crossfire, you're going to kill 80 to 90% of your bed bug infestation with your first treatment anyway. And so any eggs that hatch, now you can set it up to come back in a two or three week period and treat again when all the eggs hatch to spray, you know, one more time. 
or you can just leave it be and just see what happens because in some real uh, most cases one and done you're you're finished you don't have to go back um, only on those really 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 extreme just heavily infested bed bug homes do you even have to do a second or maybe a third treatment otherwise you're done and you haven't spent a quarter of what you would spend to do a heat treatment it's quite a bit cheaper to do a pesticide residue treatment you, you take two guys on the job you got one guy to help you you know move beds and stuff around when you flip mattresses up or to go through and treat all the the uh, the um, baseboards and the crown molding and stuff like that and then another guy can go through and treat the mattresses and the box springs and the you know the sofas and stuff as long as you got somebody to help you do all the heavy lifting you're in and out of a bed bug job in 45 to 50 minutes and and instead of having to spend eight hours the whole day there doing a heat treatment like i said it's a no-brainer for both sides um you can free up your guys if you're if you own a company and you're you know you're selling heat treatments yeah it's a big it's a big price jump but if you're doing one bed bug job and you're making a quarter of what you would do for like a heat treatment but you're doing four bed bug jobs you've got your guys still working eight hours but they're doing four jobs making the same amount of money helping four times as many people than just one home just doing a heat treatment and so like i said because typically the standard is anywhere from four to eight hours you have to sit there someone's got to watch those heat machines you know heating the house up somebody's got to be there and so you still have all those man hours in a heat treatment where you can just do a crossfire treatment or alpine treatment or whatever and go through and do all of that and then move on to the next one do four or five jobs in a day you can actually make more money um if you do cheaper jobs i mean it sounds crazy but this is why gas stations make more money if they drop the drop it down a penny per gallon because more people will buy it alicia says hello jason nice to have you on the live chat could you tell me a time frame to know if bed bugs are gone after the harris treatment okay so if you use the harris now i'm, I'm assuming that you used um, let's see. Do, 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 do. So let's say the bed bug, New York and Canada. If it will load. My computer, sometimes it's slow. Um, this one right here. So I'm hoping it was this one because if it wasn't this one, this is actually, so if you'll look at those um, active ingredients right there, it's uh, clofidin, metafluthrin, butoxide. So that is Crossfire. That's the same thing. And so... Um, I've never used Harris. You would have to tell me because I haven't had a lot of people really report back to me and let me know how it's working for them. Um, if, if you're watching this VOD later or if you're here in the live chat and you have used this specific pesticide to get rid of bed bugs, let me know because this is Crossfire. So what I was saying earlier, the Crossfire pesticide, the active ingredients after mixed to a gallon this is the exact same amount of active ingredients on this pesticide here. So it's the exact same percentage, like the 0.4%, the 0.01%, the 0.01%, the 1 pyrrhonal butoxide, all that's the same. So if you've used this, Alicia, the, all right, so if it's anything like Crossfire, uh, usually after about three to four weeks, I tell people uh, to get to be patient and give it at least three to four weeks to kill the active bed bugs that it takes um so the problem is is a nymph the egg the egg takes six to ten six to ten days to hatch the nymph takes six to ten days to bite for the first time it has to go through five and star phases before it becomes an adult but if you've treated with this uh all of the nymphs and all of the adults that come into contact with the pesticide are going to die within five minutes just like the label says five minutes all right, it doesn't kill the eggs. It doesn't actually kill the eggs. I know it says it kills the eggs, but it only kills the eggs if the eggs have not been laid. And it's it's a very deceptive, very deceptive label because it, 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 it would imply that if you take the pesticide itself and actually spray a bed bug egg with it, that that egg becomes no longer viable. But that's not true. What it does is when the egg hatches, the baby dies 
from the chemical residue that's around the egg casing. Um, but it will, a lot of bugs, like roaches, for example, can actually die and their eggs still hatch even though they hadn't been laid yet because a female cockroach carries eggs on themselves. They lay them in like a little casing on, on their butt. And uh, if they die prematurely before those eggs are actually dropped off somewhere, those eggs can still hatch. So that's why you'll see labels like this because some bugs, spiders, are one of those things that can have eggs still viable even after they're dead. Um, roaches can do that. And so the reason it says it's an egg and res it works on eggs and resistant bed bugs is because if it kills a female while she still hasn't laid the eggs, the eggs die with her. But if you spray eggs with this, it doesn't kill the eggs. It only kills the baby after it's hatched out of the egg casing. But you're, in, you're, you're actually advised on the label of Crossfire to actually, uh, the best you can, try to get the eggs and try to get the adults and all vacuumed up or washed away, um, gotten rid of before you even treat with it. And that, that increases your chances of getting rid of the bed bugs with the first treatment. So, but anyway... I tell people three to six, three to three to four weeks um, after it's originally applied is usually how long it takes to to feel like they're completely gone. Um, I have had customers say they didn't get any more bites after the very first day, but that I mean, and that's with Crossfire, not with the Harris product. That's with Crossfire, but that's actually not too bad. You know, when the person comes to you and says they haven't been bit at all and they had a pretty heavy infestation. Um, I've been able to achieve that with Crossfire. So, and I have to stress here that I talk about Crossfire. I was joking with guys on, on Facebook the other day about being of the Church of Crossfire. I talk about it all the time. If anybody ever asks me professionally or even you guys um, ask me, you know, what am I using on bed bugs? What kills bed bugs? Crossfire, Crossfire, Crossfire. I can't, I can't say it enough. Um, MGK does not pay me to sell their product. So the company that actually makes pro uh, makes it is out of Minnesota. And it's MGK. Uh, Minneapolis, I think, is the city that they're out of. But this is the company, MGK. So these are the ones that actually make uh, Crossfire. And, oh, if anybody's ever used this, if anybody's here tonight that's a pest control tech, if you've used this new Samurai, let me know how that works out, because I was actually thinking of buying some of that and trying it for ant problems, uh, where Alpine isn't working as well, which I haven't had that problem yet, but I thought I would try it anyway. The reason I like uh, this pesticide specifically is because it doesn't have a signal word on the label, just like Crossfire. So... It doesn't say danger, caution, warning. Very safe to use around children and pets. And so I was actually thinking, which Alpine is too, honestly. But I was just thinking about, you know, trying something new. And I always like to try new things and see uh, how the pesticides are working, if they're working better than what I've been using. And any way that I can become a better exterminator, I am all about becoming a better exterminator. But, um, so if you go down to... Their pesticide, let's see, what is this thing up here? What is this done? Professional pest control. So we go over here, let's see if it's got them. There's Crossfire, there's Crossfire, see? MGK's website, and there it is. And you can get all the labels here, you can read the SDS, you can see the, um, yep, so you can download the label of Crossfire, which I recommend everybody do before buying a pesticide, is you should always read the label in full, which crossfire is just two pages so it's super easy but i usually recommend that you read the label in full before ever purchasing a pesticide to make sure you're actually going to be able to apply it um and not only that but mix it you know you've got um 16 fluid ounces it, it tells you how to mix it volume of crossfire beds bug concentrate um you know you've got one gallon which is the way i always mix it which is 13 fluid ounces uh, to a bottle, to a gallon. You know, you've got 15 fluid ounces, 115 fluid ounces of water, 13 fluid ounces of Crossfire, which equals 128 ounces, which is a gallon. So, um, yeah, so I tell people, always read your labels, always, always read your labels. Sarah says, somebody says, Sarah, somebody says, somebody, man, don't say my name. 
All right, so don't say my name says. When applying Crossfire, do I need one of those fancy professional pump sprayers or can I put it in a regular cleaning spray bottle? I throw out the bottle after. No, you want to, don't use a, uh, a little plastic spray bottle. If you go to Amazon and you go to lawn and garden sprayer right there, um, you get one of these. It's a gallon. And, and like I was saying, well, you could do a half gallon if you want. Um, the label says that if you if you read this label here, so if you've got a one quart, a one quart spray bottle, um, then it says you've got twenty eight point eight fluid ounces of water in that bottle, and then three point two fluid ounces of Crossfire. The problem is this is the biggest issue with mixing mixing Crossfire. This is the hardest part of mixing crossfire is it comes in and this is the most frustrating thing because these little bottles that you buy so they expect you to buy these 13 ounce bottles now the problem is is this is 13 ounce bottle of crossfire this mixes one uh finished gallon of crossfire pesticide but the issue is is that there is no graduation mark so you know when you get a bottle of motor oil where it's got the thin line all the way down the back of the bottle and you can pour a little bit out and you're like oh i used about an ounce oh oh i used about three ounces oh i used half the bottle you can actually see how much is in the bottle of motor oil there is not a graduation on this bottle so you don't really know how much you're using unless you actually have like an a, a, a measuring device to measure how much you're pouring out of this bottle um, the, the gallon jug of Crossfire, this one here, now this is a lot. I don't recommend that somebody do this for a one-time job, just one big, huge bottle of Crossfire, because this mixes 13 gallons of Crossfire. It's 130 fluid ounces of Crossfire. It mixes 13, uh, yeah, 13, is it 13? Maybe I'm doing my math wrong. Yeah, 130 fluid ounces, which mixes 13 gallons finished solution of Crossfire. But the problem is, now see, that has a graduation. That's actually got it right on it. You can pour it through the one, the neck, the little goose neck there, right here, and you can measure it really easily with that. But the problem is, is that that's a lot of Crossfire. That is more Crossfire than you are going to need. I don't recommend buying that much Crossfire. Um, but Doris Reeves said, I purchased Crossfire. Uh, but yeah, hopefully, if I, if I answered your question... I would get a gallon sprayer and mix 13 ounces to a gallon. That's what I would do. Or half a bottle to, you know, half a gallon of water. Uh, Doris Reef said, I purchased Crossfire, and so far it's working. It has been over a month. I believe we definitely had an infection. I just bought another bottle about three days ago. I just want to spray again just in case. We hadn't had a good night's sleep in at least two years. But you've been sleeping now since you killed your bed bugs, right? I mean, I'm sure you've been sleeping better now. But yes, um, it's not a bad idea to spray a second treatment. The only reason, I don't push sales for a second treatment. I just tell people, call me if you need it, and then I can line it up to do a second treatment. But it's not something that I push. I don't try to force people to buy a second treatment. I don't have it even factored into my pricing on my the way I price my jobs. Some people will pay for a second treatment. Like I had a guy the other day, that had a pretty severe problem. He's he's actually a landlord, and he's renting to a guy. The guy that's renting to uh, from him is homeless, or he used to be homeless. And so he's got this whole mentality where he has to try to pick up what he can, save what he can. If people are throwing away like clothes on the side of the road or furniture on the side of the road, he has this uh, obsession with having to collect it because he's been homeless and he's always needs something. Because, you know, when you're homeless, a lot of the stuff you have gets thrown away and you don't, you, you have to constantly collect things in order to have possessions. And so he goes from corner to corner. He's got his spots he visits and he picks up clothes and stuff there and he brings them back and he reinfests with bed bugs. And so what the landlord said, he's like, look, just go ahead and line up a second and a third treatment for me because I know we're going to need it. I feel sorry for this guy. I can't just kick him out. He's homeless. If I kick him out, he's going to be living on the street again. And he's paying his rent. And I'll just pay to kill the bed bugs. Just come back and do it. 
And so, you know, in instances like that, he really did need to have follow-up treatment because he can't really control the people he's renting from unless he kicks them out. And he does just doesn't want to do that. You know, there are some people that you just can't change. And so that's, uh, that's one of the problems that he's dealing with. And if you're having issues where maybe you babysit your grandchildren and your, you know, maybe your son or daughter or whatever have bed bugs in their home and you still want to watch the grandkids, so you do preventative measures around your own home just to keep the bed bugs out, that's another option that you can do as far as preventative. Andre said, hey, what's up, Jason? Did some research since we last spoke about pharaoh ants. Temperate SC seems to be the only one of the only non-repellents I've come across. Can you confirm this is good? Uh, temperate, I'm not sure. I've never used temperate for ants. Um, but I have used Alpine for ants. I'm not sure if it's labeled for pharaoh ants specifically. But let's look it up real quick. So, this is for pharaoh ants. It says, uh, <laughs> kills ants, including Argentine, Carpenter, Harvester, Odorous House, Red Imported, Southern Fire... Oh, excluding pharaoh ants. So it actually excludes pharaoh ants. Hmm. Well, if temperate's labeled for them, I would do it. Um, temperate SC label. Um, let's see. Oh, this is a stupid label. Oh, it's a bit of clopperid. Yeah, that'll kill him. That'll kill him. Yeah, tempered. I forgot a tempered was a bit of clopperid. Yeah, a bit of clopperid's good on ants. It's a it's a neonicotinoid that actually does really really good on ants. So yeah, yeah, that'll work. That'll work. That'll work really 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 well. That'll work on all kinds of ants. It's the reason. So neonic neonicotinoid neonicotinoid. The is so so when I was a child. This is when I started in pest control. When I started in pest control, I, I dealt a lot with, I used chloridane, and then chloridane was outlawed shortly after I started in pest control uh, because it was outlawed in 89 uh, in the U.S. And um, I was doing termite work when I was like six, seven years old because I could fit under houses where other people couldn't. Um, my son, he started working with me when he was eight because he could fit under houses that no one else could. And that's typically the way you get broke into this work, is you have to be able to go through a hole no one else can fit through. And so I've used uh, Chloridane. I've used Durzban. Uh, I've used, uh, which, so, so, chlor so, so where I'm going with this, Chloridane is a chlorinated hydrocarbon. That's the family of pesticides it belongs to. So along with Lindane, uh, Chloridane, there's several other, uh, chlorinated hydrocarbons. Linde is actually still prescribed for things like head lice today, um, and that's a that's a pesticide family. Um, the chlorinated hydrocarbons build up in the body, and they're eliminated a lot slower. Uh, and so you can actually poison yourself with chlorinated hydrocarbons if you're not careful. And so that's the family of pesticides. And then you have the organophosphates that came after the chlorinated hydrocarbons, which are things like durazban, diazinon. Diazinon is something that most people know as something they would use in their yard for ants and spiders and stuff like that as a granulated substance, but you could also get the liquid diazinon. worked amazingly on ants. You never had ant problems if you used diazinon. Uh, those are organophosphates. They were outlawed by 04. You could no longer purchase Durzban or diazinon. Pretty much all of them were completely eliminated from the market, most organophosphates. Now, there are still some you can still purchase, like orthene, I think, is one of them, but who would want it? It smells like rotten cabbage. Um, and so there are still a few organophosphates around that people purchase. And then you've got the synthetic pyrethroid. Now, the synthetic pyrethroid uh, is a family of pesticides that are derived from plants. So you've got pyrethrins, which occur naturally in, in plants, like chrysanthemums, marigolds, certain trees, and then you've got a synthetic pyrethroid, which, which is a man-made duplicate of a pyrethrin. So it's almost the same, but what they've done is the problem is when you take a pyrethrin away from a plant, it breaks down really, really fast. And so 
as it's breaking down, it's not going to last as long. It's not going to kill bugs as long. It's not going to be able to break the life cycle of an insect. Like it's not going to be able to kill the fleas once they hatch because well, it's already dissipated. It's already it's no longer in existence because it's a pyrethrin. But the synthetic pyrethroids can last up to ninety days. And uh, some of those, uh, like I just showed a, a little bit ago, uh, bifenthrin, bifenthrin granules. They, that's a synthetic pyrethroid. Uh, uh, cypermethrin, permethrin. Uh, these are these are considered synthetic pyrethroids. They're still around. They were around during the same time as organophosphates. In fact, when we would do general pest control for people's homes, my dad had names that he would call. So so he would say, Jason, uh, bring the odorless pesticide. And the odorless pesticide was a synthetic pyrethroid. And he'd say, oh, Jason, bring the regular pesticide. That's the stuff that smelled to high heaven. That was typically Durazban, which is, uh, you know, organophosphate. So those are all outlawed now. We still have synthetic pyrethroids. They've kind of got a little more restrictive on the label. But now the next family of pesticides we moved into were the neonicotinoids, which is, what, which is where we are today. And neonics are extremely toxic to bugs. I mean, they are very toxic. Um, they are not toxic to mammals. So the unique feature of a neonic is they, they, they very rarely, uh, if ever, affect mammals in any way. Um, in fact, if you read some of the safety data sheets of some of these pesticides, they, they actually uh, say right on the label, like the, the safety data sheet. So you have to get this. The safety data sheet is actually um, it's, it's, it's uh, scientific data that was done during the studies of animals. And so what they do is they take like they'll, show, they'll tell you on the label. They say that's like rabbits. They take uh, ground, uh, maybe gophers, um, rats, mice. And they subject them to certain volumes of pesticides. And this is how they get the LD50 value on your label, which tells you how toxic this certain pesticide is to a mammal. And with a lot of the neonicotinoid, when you read the safety data sheets for these pesticides, it actually says in the description, could not achieve mortality, meaning they could not actually kill the mammal at all. They, they tried to. And they couldn't do it. And they gave them such extreme high volumes of concentrate, which is pesticide that hasn't even been mixed yet. They give them concentrate and it doesn't kill them. In fact, it doesn't even make them sick. And so this is one of the really good things about the neonicotinoid family of pesticides. This is why a lot of times I get these comments on my videos and they talk about where, oh, you're doing, you've got the, all these harmful pesticides you're using around people's children and their pets, and what are you subjecting yourself to, and how long are you going to die from mm -hmm. using these pesticides? And the thing is, my son's going in and out of the house. That's what you keep hearing over my microphone. But the, um, this is why I don't, I, I, people don't understand the difference between one chemical and another. Not every single chemical works the same on a human uh, some of the synthetic pyrethroids are actually cholinesterase inhibitors, and they're derived from plants, and they're actually more toxic than some of the man-made neonicotinoids that are different, but they don't affect mammals really in any way. And so, uh, yet they're very toxic to things like ants, because ants are very social, and they communicate with one another, and they touch one another. Uh it's, it's a lot like when Termidor first came out. Now, that's a different family altogether. It's similar to Neonic, but it's not the same um, family of pesticides. But these, uh, these newer families of pesticides, the, the reason that the, 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 the pesticide manufacturers are becoming much more sophisticated in that the pesticides don't actually harm us at all, but they kill the bugs really, really, really well. Uh, in fact, sometimes too well, which is why you have in Europe and uh, Canada and uh, Germany and a couple of a couple of other countries over overseas, uh, they actually have outlawed things like Crossfire because Crossfire is a neonicotinoid uh, pesticide. It belongs to that family of pesticides, and they are very toxic to bees because they're so toxic to social insects, insects that communicate with one another, crawl across one another like German cockroaches, uh, ants, um, termites. Uh, man, he is going in and out of the house. That's kind of annoying. I don't know if I can mute that or not. But, um, but anyway, the, 
the bugs that crawl across each other and, and communicate with one another spread it to one another and bees constantly communicate with one another constantly spread it to one another and so uh, the european honeybee while it was actually imported here in the 1600s we we haven't always had bees in the u.s so if we lost the honeybee it wouldn't it wouldn't kill us we, we could actually we still have a lot of crops all of our crops would still pollinate because we have things like butterflies and bee uh, wasps and bumblebees and stuff like that but um but yeah so jason uh doris says jason i also used the crossfire at my aunt's new apartment before she moved in just in case the movers had moved someone with bed bugs before her move that's a good idea i, I always recommend to do that andre said awesome thanks blew my mind when you broke down how pharaohs operate last stream i need to personally learn more about the active ingredients i use you push me to be a better tech good good but these are things i had to learn because see so when i took my test when i took my test i was 17 and all of the material that i had to learn in fact those manuals man if i went to my dad's house and pulled those manuals out they're so old um the, all the material were they were telling you how to mix chlordane they tell you how to mix um, Durazban, you know, and, and of course the, you know, the four feet of depth by 10 linear feet for, you know, you want pre-treats and termite treatments and all that stuff. And you had to learn that in order to pass your test. And so I know a lot of the older pesticides, but then every other year when you have to go in to get your license renewed, because we have to have training every other year in order to keep our license, you're constantly relearning about all these new pesticides that come on the scene and so i just grown i mean i know a lot about bug spray but like we don't even have chloridane anymore you can't even buy it anymore uh not in america now you can get it in some other countries you can get it in i think south america they have it still and i think they still use it in a lot of the tropical uh parts of the world tropical islands and stuff like that you can still get you use chloridane but here in the u.s it's actually outlawed and i think in canada too i don't think you can use it in canada either but yeah, but because because ants communicate with one another and they they feed one another, they take care of one another, uh, certain ants do certain jobs. So like the workers, they crawl out and they gather the food, they bring the food back, they feed it to the reproductives, the reproductives then turn around and feed the workers. And so they're constantly in this I'll take care of you if you take care of me kind of mentality. And so if you give them a pesticide like temperid, which is a metacloprid, which is, it is a neonicotinoid, because it's so highly contagious as a pesticide, because a lot of times with the neonics, one thing you'll notice is that if a bug crawls across a neonicotinoid, they, it, it actually causes them to, to be contagious in a way with the pesticide. So it sticks to them. And then when they communicate with other bugs, like other ants and stuff, it actually rubs off, and then that ant is infected. And then that ant can then rub off onto another ant, and then so forth and so forth, until all the ants are dead. And that's why imidacloprid, when I notice that the active ingredient's imidacloprid, I'm like, oh yeah, that's going to kill ants, because it's a neonicotinoid, and that's how they work. Uh, Andre says, I wish we had mandatory training for renewal. All that's needed is money for the fee. Yeah, see, we have to pay too. Like I had to pay mine. I had to my my renewal. I think my license is expired in June or July. Hey, can you turn that off? Yeah. In uh in June or July this year, my my license actually expires. But um, I already did my renewal back in December. Online, online training. It's fantastic this year. I actually stood awake for the whole thing. One of the problems with the, and I, that's going to make me sound horrible, but because it's like, oh, it's so boring. But the, actually, they're not boring. I actually enjoy going to the training classes because they usually have somebody from uh, Bayer. They have people from like uh, Dow Chemicals one time. They had a guy come in from uh, Syngenta, BASF, uh, you know, MGK, all these different companies. They come around. And really, they're, they're selling their product, but you learn about these new products on the market that might work for your company. But they also give whole presentations explaining like how bed bugs work and how ants work and how spiders work, how moles. So the last one I went to, uh, this was like four years ago, the last one I went to, they taught us that moles are very aggressive. Moles actually kill one another. So if you have moles in your yard, this is the time of year most people will see them. Um, because they'll be tunneling around in your gardens and in your yard. 
they eat grubs. And what happens is if you take a mole out of the yard and you put it in a bucket, another mole will come in and, and, and fill in that mole's place. So within 20 minutes sometimes, really fast, they, uh, they tunnel in and they take over the other mole's position. But not together. Because if you take them and put them together, they'll kill each other. They hate each other. They're very aggressive. But because of their keen sense of smell, they can tell if a mole is in the yard or not. And if the mole is not in the yard, oh, they'll move right on in and start eating the grubs in that yard. But if you take them and you force them together in an area where they can't get away from one another, they'll kill each other. So if you have moles in your yard, one of the ways that you can get rid of moles in the yard is you treat the soil with a granule or a pesticide. You kill the grubs in the soil. The moles will leave your yard by themselves because they have no food. Moles are carnivorous. They eat things like grubs and bugs in the ground. The only time you may have problems getting rid of moles in your yard is if you have, uh, is if it's the 17 year cicada, or if you have like there's a 17 year, there's a 13 year. There are uh, because the cicadas are grubs before they're cicadas, and the grubs crawl around underground, and the moles eat them. And so in the year where that is is prevalent in the ground, and they're really bad because they're close to the surface, the moles come in and eat them, and you can't really get rid of the moles because there's so many cicada grubs. Um, let's see. I remember you saying that if landlords and apartment complexes would just buy crossfire and spray after each person moves out, it would cut down a lot on problems of having an infestation. I pay attention to everything you say. I'm located in Dallas, Texas. Yeah, so one of the problems is Virginia. In Virginia is if you are living in the property, the landlord's not allowed to treat. But if the property is vacant then the landlord can treat, depending on your state's laws. But in Virginia, a landlord can absolutely go in and treat his own apartment if no one's living there. But as soon as someone's living there and he starts charging rent, he's not actually allowed to treat the apartment unless he's a licensed pest control technician because the state views it as income towards pest control because pest control is a fringe benefit that you're receiving as a tenant and the landlord's providing it to you, which he's making money off of your uh, rent, so he's essentially selling you pest control. That's the way the state sees it, and that's illegal. It's illegal in Virginia. I know Maryland, um, uh, North Carolina, South Carolina, Georgia, and Florida. I know those states, it's illegal for pest control, uh, for any landlord to provide pest control to their tenant uh, without being licensed by the state. So, um, yeah, so, but, but if no one's living there, you can absolutely go in and treat the apartment. Andre says, how often do you have to renew? I missed if you said it already. How often do you have to renew? Oh, every two years. Every two years I have to renew my license. I have to renew, I have to pay my license fee every year. It's like my business license I have to pay every year. Um, but as far as my actual, like my business and pest control applicator license, all that stuff has to be renewed every year. But in order for me to keep my... Uh, my actual credentials as a pest control technician for two, every two years, ever since I was 17, I've had to renew it every two years. I have to take the course. I have to prove I've got the hours under my belt that I've learned what I need to learn. And you can dock hours. So the way Virginia works is that uh, if you get more than what you need, you can actually dock those hours towards your future um, training. So you don't have to go to training as often, but I actually like to go. So I don't mind it. I'm I'm obsessed with pest control. I love to learn. I'm constantly reading. I mean, here you see, I've got all this stuff. I make all these videos. I'm constantly researching stuff because I want to make sure that the information that I'm providing the public on my YouTube channel is actually backed by facts. A lot of these videos I make, I have a lot of comments, and they say they'll they'll come on and they'll say things like, "Well, you don't know anything of what you're talking about," and I'm like, "I don't think you watched the whole video," because I, a lot of these videos I actually like, so I've got one on diatomaceous earth. This is really, this really ticks people off. So this is my second most popular video I've ever made. <laughs> I didn't realize that was the second popular video. But this video right here, um, let me show you. Let me share my, so this video right here, why you should never use diatomaceous earth. So, oh, it's ads. But it's, it's called why, why you should never use diatomaceous earth for the control of bedbugs. Because that's what people use. 
It's got 141,000 views, which is pretty, I mean, I think that's pretty big for me, even though it's been on YouTube for three years. I mean, I've had plenty of time to build that number. But when you scroll down and you read some of the comments <clears throat> on this video, Charles Hill says, yes, DE does work. This guy thinks his job might be on the line, okay? Which I replied to, because I reply to almost every comment that I get. And I let him, I let him say it. I don't have to. I mean, I could delete that comment if I wanted to, but I don't want to. I don't want to delete his comment. I want people to see that I have some, I mean, some people that actually disagree with me. Um, if they get on here and they start just saying a bunch of stuff that I just, have just belittling me and berating me and not only me, but my audience, I delete those. You don't see those. But anyway, Bill Smith says they don't want you using it because it works and puts them out of a job. Okay. But the point is, is that if you had actually watched this whole video that I, that I do on why diatomaceous earth, why you shouldn't use it, I go into the details of how it affects your health by breathing it in, how it's harmful to you by using it. And I just went over this whole, the whole regurgitation of knowledge about how pesticides work and how neonicotinoids are practically harmless to mammals. Most of them have no effect on mammals whatsoever. And here, diatomaceous earth actually causes breathing problems. It actually uh, causes COPD. It causes emphysema. It causes uh, asthma. It causes breathing problems. Okay, we just came out of 2020. It causes breathing problems. Right? This is what people have been worried about for the whole past year is breathing problems. This pesticide absolutely causes breathing problems. It and, it and people will say, well, that's because you're using pool grade and not food grade, but there is no difference. The point is, is that the food grade diatomaceous earth, while it does have less crystalline DE in it, it has some. You can't remove it all. And that's what I'm trying to say is people use food grade DE all the time and they hurt themselves. They hurt themselves. I have other comments on that same video. If you scroll down and read the other comments, you'll see where people will say, oh, I used it and I wish I had watched this video. I can hardly breathe, you know, because they used DE in their house and they misapplied it and it wasn't done correctly. So the reason that I make these videos about why you should not use it is because it hurts you. I don't want you to hurt yourself. You know, the whole point is I'm here trying to teach you the safe way to do it. Not, I don't want you to hurt yourself. I don't want people to get hurt. I just want you to kill the bugs. The bugs, they need to die. People, they don't need to die. Bugs need to die. <laughs> bugs need to die. Uh, Doris Reeve said, I will definitely keep my own crossfire on hand because trust me, I never want to deal with bed bugs again. Thank you so much. Uh, Andre, LOL, it's like, I'm sorry, I want to save your lungs. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> uh, Dory says, your job is definitely not on the line. Again, I live in Dallas, Texas. You don't have to you don't have to do what you do. Thanks for helping. Well, see, like, all right, so Doris lives in Texas, okay? She watches my videos. I, I can't. I mean, I'm sure Doris would love to fly me down to Texas and have and we meet together. We have a good get to out, get get together, cook out or something. It'll be great, <laughs> and I'll kill your bed bugs. Excuse me, <clears throat> allergies. But anyway, the point is, is that I can't legally treat. Because I'm only licensed in the state of Virginia. And in the United States, you have to be licensed in each individual state that you want to apply pesticides for profit. You're required to be licensed. If you're not licensed, you, ruin, you, you jeopardize your state license you already have. So because I'm licensed in Virginia, let me give you an example. If I drive south to, south to North Carolina... I'm about an hour and a half from the border of North Carolina. If I drive down 29 South and I go across the border into North Carolina, I could service that area. I'm not that far away. Maybe, maybe actually probably less than an hour and a half from North Carolina. But the point is, is that if I operate my pest control business in North Carolina, then 
I could lose my license in Virginia because I misapplied. I, I, I didn't apply pesticides with a license in North Carolina. I have to have a reciprocal license in North Carolina to do it. And because I don't, I'm not allowed to. So the whole thing with YouTube, it's really just to help you guys. I just want, I mean, here I am. It's, it's what time is it? It's almost midnight. You know, I, I could be in bed to sleep. I've got to drive my wife tomorrow to the midwife appointment. So, uh, you know, I'm going to have to drive all the way to Charlottesville tomorrow. But I need to be in bed. <laughs> but here I am helping you guys, talking with you guys. So uh, Andre says, I once met a lady that had DE in her ears to keep the bed bugs out when I went to treat. Oh, that's horrible. That's horrible. I had a guy call me one time and told me he was spraying himself with cat dip, uh, what he used to actually dip his cat to kill the fleas on his cat because he didn't want bed bugs to bite him. And he said, well, it works on the cat to keep the bugs off. I figured I would use it on myself. And that's 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 toxic. That is toxic to mammals. You don't want to do that. So, But I am actually going to call it a night. I've been on for over an hour. Like I said, it's about midnight. I uh, really appreciate everybody showed up. I know it's late. I'm really sorry it was so late tonight. I usually try to get on here by 9 or 9.30, but the later in the year it gets and the more into the summer it gets, the longer, the harder it is to make these live streams. But I, I didn't make last week, and I wanted to make sure I was here for you guys tonight. So hopefully this has helped you. Hopefully this has been informative. Uh, like I said, go to my channel, like and subscribe if you haven't already. Um, I've got the, like I said, I want to go over these one more time, these new videos I've got up, these pretty cool videos and the TikToks and stuff. So, uh, these come up better on your phone. So if you actually watch your phone, um, they, they look a lot better on those instead of on YouTube. Because if you click this, of course, if you click it there, I actually, it's monetized. So, but see there how it's, it's all weird and it's not, you know, it's a, it's a vertical instead of horizontal, uh, but that's because it's really made to be viewed on a smartphone. So anyway, like and subscribe to the channel. See you guys later. And oh, yeah, Andre. Yeah, yeah, number four. <laughs> she keeps getting mad at me for telling people, but I think we've pretty much told people now that uh, we are having a fourth baby. I think it's okay because we went and put it on Facebook, so I think it's okay to tell everybody now. But yes, we're having another baby. Um, Charlie is two, and so this baby should be there right after Charlie turns three. So, yep, we're going to have a fourth baby. So, we got our first, first midwife appointment tomorrow. We've already got the ultrasound picture in, and uh, the very first early, early, early ultrasound, you know, when it's just about, you know, that big. So, you guys have a real great night. Really appreciate it, and I'm going to try to get some sleep. Y'all have a great day and night and whatever. Wherever you're from, whenever you're watching this, good night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. <laughs> oh, that never gets old.